it's the moment of truth. This is my IDE and this is me chatting with DeepSeek completely locally, completely offline. How cool is that? So if you've been using DeepSeek, your information, your sensitive information may have been leaked. Now, the way it can be leaked is because, oh, I've been blocked. Um, <laughs> well, there you go. I'm blocked from DeepSeek apparently. Uh, well, anyway, I was going to go on DeepSeek's privacy policy and show you that on the privacy policy, which actually, if you're wanting it, it's here. Um, because apparently I can't see it anymore. Well, anyway, basically they steal all your data. They take all your data, they store it, and they sell it. So, that's a concern. The way around this is to install the module locally and then hope that it can't call back. But it might be able to call back. Basically, as in it might be able to, although it be as local, it may send data over that net back. I don't know. I'm not sure. It may it may not. So, anyway, well, the way you can fix that is by unplugging your Ethernet cable. But the problem with running it on your own PC is if, like me, your PC is pretty rubbish. Mine is an old PC that I have. Right now, this is recording on my Mac. But the PC that I'm using to run the models is an old PC, so it doesn't mess up my Mac. Anyway, so uh, basically, I can't have anything else running if I want it to run optimally. So, for example, I normally use VS Code, but VS Code's a bit chunky. It has a bunch of features, so I really don't want to use that. I have a couple of other options if I want an AI integrated, which is like I can use Cursor, but it's not. It's not the cheapest. I can then also use Bolt, for example, but that's not the cheapest. And I could use Bolt.diy, which is essentially the open source version of Bolt, but it has known bugs. And again, it's not the it's not the most lightweight. So my solution was create my own IDE. Bam! That's what you're seeing here. So let me show you how to set up your large language model, how to install this IDE, and then how to use it. So first things first, we have to download Olama. So this is our way to get up and running with large language models. When you download Olama, just click download, next, 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 install. Yes, I accept all the terms and conditions. Please steal my data, accept. Then once you've done that, you then want to install the models. So for example, it's saying you can run these here. If you want to see which models are available, click on models. You can see here, there's a bunch. So like, for example, this is for coding. So it might be better to look at these. I don't know, we'll see. So anyway, Deep Sea Car 1, that's the one you're probably wanting. You have these, this variety of parameters, right? So you have either a 1.5 billion parameter model, 7, 8, 14, blah, 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 to 6, 7, 1. Now, on my PC, it's tiny, as I've shown you, it doesn't have much stuff going on with it. So we're going to just download the 1.5 billion. To run it, we do this, or do copy this command here, Olama run, so click copy, and then we open up a terminal, and from here, you would just paste that in after you've installed the Llama, and then as you can see, mine runs. If you haven't downloaded it before, it will pull it, but if you just want to pull it, so you just want to download the model without running it, you can just do, instead of this, do pull, and then it will pull the manifest, blah, blah, blah. So you can do that instead. But when you do run, this now becomes an interface to chat with DeepSeek, which is cool. But it's not programmatic, it's via terminal. So the way we want to do it is programmatically. We want our code for our application to be able to use the API endpoint of Olama to then send the prompts. So to do that, you literally just write Olama serve and then suddenly now, Olama as a service is running or listening on this port. Now, 127001, that's your IP address, your lookback IP address. So this just means my own computer. So it's not the IP that's out in the world. Everyone's 127001 refers to themselves. And then port 11434, a port just like an input-output place for your computer. So basically, it's listening on one of the places so that you can give it an input and it will take it in. So that's now running, perfect. So the next thing now we want to do is download this code. So if we go to, I'll go to VS Code and open up the README, and I'll show you just how to do it. So DeepSeek IDE, this is the IDE that I've just made. DeepSeek IDE is a lightweight AI powered code editor. <laughs> it is actually, which is pretty cool. So 
clone the repository. First thing you need to do is clone the repo. So I'll have the link down below. But essentially, this here is the, or well, I suppose whilst I'm here, I do have a kind of AI startup kind of thing on the go. Um, because I'm just learning how to build products, which is cool. Leveraging the AI, it's out there. And the README Generator is my current project. If you want access to it, because I'm looking for beta testers, just leave a comment below, message me on LinkedIn, reach out to me somehow. Um, I'll show you now how I made the README. So we have a README Generator website running here locally. This is what it looks like, running at localhost. See it logged in automatically as me, 26 credits remaining. So first we're going to select a repository. We'll go for deep seat. And then you can see there's no readme found. So we're going to click generate readme. And then it streams in, but it auto populates what to be this here. So we can see it's made the readme, deep seek IDE, features, installation, usage, contributing license, acknowledgement, and even badges too. And so we can actually ask for revisions here to update this, but I think that looks good. We could also go directly into the editor to say, for example, the auto save feature's not working, so we'll remove auto to save, back to preview. There we go, looking good. So we can either copy this to our clipboard, download it as a file, or push to GitHub. Let's push to GitHub. And there we can see, readme successfully pushed. It's made a new branch. Let's go to the pull request. You can see here, it's made a new branch. This pull request adds a new readme file generated by code command. Click commit. And then we can see this here. And this is the commit. Boom. Perfect. So then we can just merge that. Confirm the merge. Delete the branch. Then we'll go to the code and we can see the readme. Boom. <laughs> Simple as that, man. So anyway, now you're back. Let's go to DeepSeek IDE. This will be the first link in the description below and you want to clone this repository. So to do so, code, then here you copy that and then you go to command line like here and you'll go to wherever you normally store your code. So say it's here, you would just do git clone and then paste that in and then that will download the repository to your computer. Now, once it's downloaded, the next thing we want to do is install the dependencies. So we do npm install, npm install, and then it will install all the dependencies that you need to run the server. And then to run the server, npm run dev, or if you want to run it as like an application like this, you do npm run dev colon electron. Now, when you run it, it will pop up like this, and this is your IDE, so a quick run through open folder, if you click on that, that then, you know, you can then go through your file explorer, click a specific folder, and then it will populate here with that folder. So this is your actual file explorer. And then when you click on a file, pops up here, you can shut it down by clicking the cross, just like normal, or you can make changes, click save, then it will save the file, so file saved successfully, and then close it and you open it, the changes have been made, which is pretty cool. See all of this functionality is much harder to implement than you think. So that's that there. On the bottom we have our terminal. So there you go. You can see it's doing something. And we'll do Python 3. Or actually first let's see where we are. So if we do CD, deep seek ID. So let's move into test. Oops. Test. Right, we have our test here, so that's python3 test.py, and there we go. So, we can see the terminal's working. Now, on the right-hand side here, we have our AI Assistant. Now, the cool thing about the AI Assistant is it actually has the context of any files you have open here. So, if I had a bunch of files here, it would have the context of all of them, which is pretty cool, because then we can leverage it to debug, for example. So, let me open this up a bit wider. Right, I'll just go full screen. And so what we can do, for example, is say, um, please remove the comments from the code. And then it will start thinking because that's what DeepSeek does. And then after that, it will then give you it here. So what's it saying? Blah, 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 to make a code cleaner. 
Same for channel zip, remove the commented lines, for eye and range, blah blah blah, this will leave just this here. It seemingly has not rendered, fair enough. Now let's go in here, paste it in. Now let's command S. And let's run it again. And there we go. Oh, no, I hadn't saved it. Let's see what's it saying. Name test is not defined. Aha, so it's because of that there. It's formatted it all funny. I'll have a look at that. Right, there we go. So now I can say it's no longer printing on a new line. They're all on the same line. And we'll see what DeepSeek says here. So the whole idea of this is to now essentially have like ChatGPT or DeepSeek in my, in my um, IDE with the automatic context so that I don't have to keep copying and pasting it in all the time. Because it's normally a bit of a nightmare. Oops. Make sure to save that. Asterisk list is not defined. Oh, so I've missed this here. Where is it? Asterisk list. I'll just copy that in because. I know it's missing instead of having to ask the chatbot again. Then we'll save it and we'll run it. And there we go. So, with the help of our AI inside the ID. So, yeah, pretty cool. I think it's cool. First time I've ever made anything like this. If you want, by the way, a full walkthrough of the code, just let me know. Um, a quick reference just for if you want to use this. You can change the model on here, this line here. You see it's model, blah, 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 and then prompt, blah, blah, blah. The prompt has been made or engineered such that it tries to, to give a, a contextualized answer. Um, and as you can see, it passes in the input from the user, as well as a format context, which is the, the files that are open. If you want a full walkthrough of this code, let me know. But a quick brief walkthrough for if you're going to go and have a look at it is on this side, we have our components. Now we have AI chat, which is this component here. We have editor and editor tabs, which is this component here. File explorer, which is this component here. And terminal, which is here. And then the header stuff, etc., is mainly captured in this app. Now it's all written in React, so it does work on the browser, but I've uh, essentially containerized it, was the wrong word, but encapsulated it within Electron, packaged it in Electron, which allows you to then run it as an actual application. So anyway, if you want a, a better walkthrough, let me know.